recording in progress. Hi everyone, my name is Jason Manassa, and this is my presentation on the Vulcans. Um, I gave this presentation a couple of days ago in person at the Engineering Honors Symposium, but I'm going to be giving it again here online to make it more accessible for everyone. Um, and so I've taken this poster that you see that I presented in person and turned it into slides uh, to make it more accessible. So my project is titled The Vulcans, A Reflective and Critical History of the College of Engineering's Secret Society. Uh, this was my engineering honors capstone for my senior year. And I did this alongside Professor Deirdre de la Cruz in the history department in LSA. Um, so it's quite a different project than most people. Most people did engineering projects and mine is more of a historical project. Uh, and it falls under the service category. So I'll kind of get into how this came about right now. So how did I get here? Um, well, I got involved in this project because I was just really interested in the society. It's the last surviving secret society on campus. And because it's in the College of Engineering, it was of particular interest to me being an engineer. Um, there wasn't much info, if any info at all about it on the internet uh, compared to other secret societies that have been um, established and ongoing at Michigan. And so that was another reason I wanted to look into it more. Uh, I actually took a class over the summer with Dr. De La Cruz. I took a history of the occult. And I didn't actually use the class for any credit. I took it purely because it was interesting to me. And after that class, I was like, this is so cool. I wanna do research in the field and the Vulcan project fit perfectly with what I wanted to do um, just out of personal curiosity, not because of any assignment. And then when the honors capstone came around, I was like, okay, let me go all in on this um, because if I have an actual deadline, I'll do the whole project. Uh, whereas if it's just on my own, I'll probably never finish it. And uh, one of the challenges I encountered was this organization has been around since 1904. So all of the documents uh, that I used were primary documents, but because a lot of them were written back when people would write in really obscure cursive, um, it made reading the documents super difficult. So I would spend hours and hours and hours at the Finley Library trying to take this cursive and convert it into regular um, typed up English that I can read. Uh, and that was quite difficult. I actually had to consult my mother who has a master's in English to help me with it quite a bit. Um, and even uh, she had a lot of trouble with it. And as for things I wasn't able to finish in this project, um, I wasn't able to really look at where the organization is now and where it's going as much as I would have liked to. Uh, as you could guess, the society being secret is a big deal to them. And so getting people to talk who were in the Vulcans has been quite difficult. Um, I did make a whole list of potential candidates. Sorry, I'm trying to show my notebook with lists of names. Um, but I did make a list of a lot of Vulcan members who were either presidents of the organization or faculty members. Um, there are some current faculty members who are still members of the Vulcans who I would like to reach out to. Uh, but due to the time constraints of the honors capstone and having to do my own classes outside of this project, I wasn't able to, uh, I guess, do as much journalism as I would like to. So this project is more on stuff that was already recorded. Um, by the Vulcans themselves. So just a quick introduction. Uh, the Vulcans was a senior, or, uh, senior engineering society organized in 1904. Um, they held social activities, but they also raised money for scholarships. Uh, and this scholarship is still around today. So if you go and look at uh, Michigan engineering scholarships, there's one called the Vulcan Scholarship. Uh, and they established this in the 1950s. And so three types of students could be members. Originally, it was just uh, seniors, but now they've extended it to um, graduate students, honorary members, so these are typically faculty members, or like the Dean of Engineering is always a member. Um, and you can also join the society as a junior now as well. Um, and the way that you get inducted into the society is you're basically chosen by current members based on your achievements. And so typically the members include uh, presidents of Tau Beta Pi, which is another engineering uh, honor society on campus, presidents of project teams, um, honor Council members, although I will say I'm currently the president of Honor Council and I was never invited, nor does anyone on Honor Council know about this organization. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure who they really tap nowadays. I'm just going off of who they used to tap and who uh, a couple people I was able to get in contact with told me they were able to tap. Um, oh, and tapping is the uh, recruitment process. So, yeah, it looks like it's mainly um, heads of student orgs and heads of honor societies. And so the, their meetings were held in the Union Tower. So if you ever look at the Michigan Union, you can see it's actually six floors. So those top three floors used to belong to the three secret societies on campus, well, the three main ones. Um, and the Vulcans had the fifth floor in the Union. Uh, you can actually see it here on the right. So this is a picture of the Vulcans in their fifth Union floor room before they got kicked out. 
Um, and this is where they would hold meetings and discuss ways that they could improve the College of Engineering. Uh, but in 2000, they were kicked out of the union room due to controversy uh, with other societies on campus. And so since then, uh, they have not really had a home as far as I know. Um, they've basically just been floating around North Campus, taking up different engineering rooms to do their various meetings. Um, and since 2010, no written records from the organization exist. And so basically my chronology of events is really good up into 2010. And then afterwards, um, it's, it's pretty weak. Uh, and aside from providing its members uh, with fellowship and inspiration, uh, the society's goal was to just help the College of Engineering. So they would raise funds for construction projects. They would raise funds for the hospital. Um, Larry Page, who was the co-founder of Google, was a member. So you can actually see that's why the Google logo down there. Um, and then all of the deans uh, have been members as well, uh, um, in addition to a lot of faculty. So my objectives for the project were to compile and publish their history, uh, to find out who current Vulcan members were and gain their primary accounts, um, to shine a light on the problematic practices of the Vulcans in the past, and then provide a comprehensive overview for the Vulcans on their own history. Um, the Vulcans in 2004 wrote a short history on themselves, but I felt like it'd be really cool if they had a more comprehensive history that really went into depth. Um, and so I'm hoping to provide that to them uh, once this project is finished. And so here on the right, I basically show some of the primary sources I would use so top left, you can see a newspaper clipping. Um, in the top right, these are photographs of Vulcan members from 1915. Uh, in the bottom right, this is a member, uh, somebody who is potentially gonna join the organization. They wrote a letter to the Vulcans and I was able to use that as a primary resource. Uh, and then here in the bottom left is the most interesting. I actually went through the alumni files of the University of Michigan. And I went in this one guy's file, um, John Abbott. And in there, he actually had his, his original um, notification card of uh, possible election into the Balkans, and so I was able to look at that uh, and record that. And so as for the materials and methods, I kind of just went over them, but I would go to the Bentley Historical Library on North Campus, which houses a lot of um, University of Michigan historical documents, and I also use the Michigan Daily for newspaper articles, um, as well as the Michigan uh, yearbook, the Michigansian, I believe it's pronounced, um, and so here at the bottom, you can kind of see their Michigansian page, uh, how it evolved over time. So basically, uh, every couple of years, they would hire a new artist to design their page. And I just thought it was interesting because it reflected kind of art styles of the time. Um, and at the top right, you can see some more imagery. Uh, but yeah, basically use entirely primary sources, um, for the exception of a couple of Michigan daily articles that uh, were secondary. So the results of this project were that a 54 page document on the Vulcan history was created. Um, it's sitting at 54 pages as I record this video, but I actually already have another 17 pages that I just need to append to the document. Um, and then I have to do a lot more writing towards the newer section once I interview the Vulcan members I have here on my list. So it'll probably end up being 70 to 80 pages. Um, and uh, I basically learned that they were instrumental in organizing College of Engineering events. So that, like I said earlier, they supported the university hospital and they donated a lot to the hospital. They provided entertainment for the sick. They would host balls and galas for students. Um, they also generated a variety of initiation rituals that changed with the times based on availability um, to certain venues. So sometimes they would host their, their balls in the union and then other times they would host it in maybe someone's house. Um, and then it's kind of interesting because over time, they kind of go from being super secret to being super public and publishing articles in the Michigan Daily um, about themselves. Uh, and so that was quite interesting. And so here on the right, the top right, this is actually a mural that they, um, they had done after the Great Depression. So they actually hired artists to work on this mural for them um, as a way to uh, help fund artists uh, coming out of this really uh, difficult financial time. And here in the bottom right, you can see a typical Vulcan meeting where members would discuss various problems on campus and try and think of ways either through fundraisers or community events that they could um, alleviate those issues. So one example is in the early 2000s, they helped host Martin Luther King Day events um, and host breakfasts for students during finals week and stuff like that to just improve the College of Engineering work. Uh, but there is quite a bit of controversy. And so this slide, um, is meant to kind of showcase that. So on the left, 
here you see um, during one of their initiation rituals how they look like they're wearing blackface. Um, essentially, because they believe in the, or their society is based around uh, the Greek god Vulcan of fire, um, they would cover themselves in crank crankcase oil and ash um, during their initiation ritual to kind of mimic the toil of Vulcan. Um, and they would carry these torches because, once again, the symbol of fire. Um, but obviously, it looks like KKK imagery. And um, it's actually interesting because some potential members actually would not join the organization because members would wear um, hooded robes with pointy tips, which once again looks like the KKK. They would do this initiation ritual, which looks like blackface. Um, interestingly enough, though, they did induct um, black members before it was, uh, I guess, popular. Um, so they inducted their first black member in 1968 and their first female member in 1972. So this was way before all the other secret societies. Um, and if you look at future pictures of the Vulcans, uh, the group was quite diverse with a pretty even split of men and women. Um, but in 2000, all of the uh, secret societies on campus pricked out of their respective union rooms. So the two other societies were Order of Angel and Adara. Um, Adara was, filmed, or was formed uh, because Mishagama, or sorry, Order of Angel, they would eventually be called, um, wouldn't allow female members. And so Adara uh, was formed out of that necessity for a female society. Um, but due to controversy with those groups using Native American relics, um, and I guess acting elitist, according to Michigan Daily articles, um, amidst mounting pressure to the university president at the time, um, the president decided to kick all of the societies out of the Union Tower and kind of seal off that top floor. So if you actually go in the Michigan Union, go to the third floor and go to the staircase, you won't be able to go up into the fourth, fifth, and sixth floors anymore. All the societies were kicked out. Um, and so Adara and Order of Angel decided to kind of go public and be transparent with their policies going forward. Um, but this only drew more controversy. And so those groups ended up dissolving in 2021. Uh, whereas the Vulcans, when all this controversy hit, and it's actually interesting reading their primary source doc documents, they went like complete shutdown mode. They completely went into secrecy. Um, and I guess that's been their key to success because the other societies that went public had to dissolve amidst controversy, whereas the Vulcans, you can't find any information about them post 2010. So in conclusion, the Vulcans were founded with the goal of aiding the College of Engineering and their focus on public service has resulted in many parts of college life that seem standard to students today. Um, they founded the Honor Council, helped raise funds for construction projects and worked alongside other student groups and engineering student government to host events. Uh, but similar to other societies on campus, they are riddled with some controversial past. Um, and so they plunged into secrecy rather than formally apologize, implement transparency into their dealings. And that's kind of where we're at today. So. Uh, yeah, you can't really find much information out about them besides going to the Bentley. And so this paper that I'm producing is hopefully going to kind of shine light on the organization. Um, and here in the bottom left, I can kind of show, so this is the original group of Vulcans, uh, class of 1904, very out in the open, publishing themselves in the yearbook. Uh, and the more modern Vulcans, so this is actually 1994 now, so 90 years later, um, and they're wearing their robe, it's kind of mysterious. They actually wrote in their um, primary source document how they wanted to look mysterious uh, in the Michigan yearbook. And so, yeah, that's where we're at today. Um, but where are they now? Uh, where are the Vulcans? And I love this image. This is actually the first image I use in the paper. Um, this used to be their Anvil Monument on Central Campus, right in front of West Hall. Now it's located in front of the Eeks Building. So if you ever walk in front of the Eeks Building, look to the right, there's that Anvil there um, with the Vulcan name on it in 1904, the date that the society was founded. Um, and this Anvil moved in the 1980s to North Campus when engineering moved to North Campus. But it kind of shows how today you don't really see the group or hear about the group. Um, and from what I've heard from current alumni, they're not very active. They continue doing initiation, so they still are uh, existing. But in terms of aiding the College of Engineering, not many students know about them. Um, I interviewed quite a few of the engineering student uh, teams on campus, their, their presidents and their vice presidents, and asked them, do you know anything about the Vulcans? And they were all like, what, what are you talking about? I mean, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, you know, uh, no, I don't know anything about it. It was like a, I legit don't know anything you're talking about. Um, like I said, I'm president of engineering honor council. Also don't know anything about them other than the fact that I did this project. Um, I will say that their faculty advisor is involved in the honors program, um, the official engineering honors program. And uh, I have heard from members that the, or that the, um, 
the uh, board of tau beta pi is typically all Vulcan. So um, that's kind of where my next step, I'm gonna go interview those people. Um, but yeah, so as for their current whereabouts, largely unknown, even to current Vulcan alumni, they were telling me that they don't know much about the organization right now. Um, some of them do receive newsletters letting them know initiations are still happening, but in general, the organization is kind of, yeah, disappeared. Um, and so I hope you like this presentation. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Vulcans. Uh, my name is Jason Manassa. Like I said, at the beginning of the project, I'm actually going to be going into a PhD here at the University of Michigan. Um, and so if you're interested in the Falcons or you want to reach out and ask for a copy of the paper, I'd be more than happy to give that to you. I've already had a couple of students and faculty members really interested in the project. Um, and so if that's something that of interest to you, please reach out. I'd love to give you a copy. Um, there will be a copy provided to the Bentley Historical Library, so you can go there and read it uh, once I finish the paper. Um, but yeah. I hope you like this presentation and you learned something.